so, so the way that this is going to work the rest of the class is that I'm going to walk you through the first phase here. And then for each subsequent phase, I'm going to do a little teaching at you um, pre-phase to give you some, this is kind of what you need to know in order to apply it and find out what the password is for the next phase. And you're going to work on your own. And then we'll go over the solution together. Um, and then next phase, same thing, next phase, same thing. And we'll go through the bomb lab and go through stage four, maybe, depending on time, um, by the end of today. And then tomorrow we'll finish it up and um, then go over some additional material, um, object-oriented. How, how do you look at object-oriented code? And how does that affect uh, what you're looking at in the assembly and a few other things? How do you just get um, levels in the bomb lab? I forgot the syntax. Oh, uh, so so here's the other piece of this. Once we well, I'll go over that once once I've walked you through this phase. Okay. Do you want the non wise answer for the password in the strings file or the strings window? Start with the main file and look for the strings. Welcome to my famous little bomb. Let's see what it calls after it displays that and start reversing. Okay. So we have the suggestion to take a look at this phrase here, welcome to my fiendish little bomb. Have a nice day. And then go from there. Why wouldn't we want to start with the boom, the bomb has blown up? After right, so you would put that in the back. Yeah. So one thing to know with reverse engineering, it's more difficult to go backwards, although not impossible. Um, I'll actually show you a little bit of that in the walkthrough here. So yeah, so we're gonna start with this welcome to my Finnish little bomb. Basically the prompt that is right before you have to type something in. And we can walk through from there. So welcome to my fiendish little bomb. So the way that we're going to do this, we have Ida. And we have the strings here. We're going to find welcome to my fiendish little bomb, which to blow yourself up, have a nice day. So something we can do here in the strings window is double click on that. And it will bring us to the memory location that that is in the data section. And what we can do is we can place our cursor on the this string. It, it actually, Ida gives it a variable name. Um, and we can, so here's one thing to know. You can change the variable name that Ida gave it by putting your cursor on it and then pressing N. It'll say, okay, what, what do you want to name it? You can type in your own name and then say, okay. And it'll rename it. Um, for this one, you know, not so much, but for uh, other parts of the lab, you'll want to do that. You can do the exact same thing, function names, which we'll, we'll want to do. Um, but, but right now, we're going to take a look at where, where is this being used in the code? And with Ida, you take a look at what's called the cross-references. And to see those, you, you put your cursor on what you want to get the cross-references for and press the X key. And that'll say, oh, well, it's being used in main function, line 98, assembly line 98. And we say, OK, let's go there. And it brought us here. Push offset. Print out. So, for those who are not familiar with C, does someone who is familiar with C want to say, what does printf do? What does printf do? Print stuff. It prints stuff. Yay. What uh, What are the arguments to printf? Right. 
right? So printf will take um, one or more arguments. It'll take a string to print, or if you have um, certain uh, special strings within that string, like percent %s, percent %c, percent %d, um, it will then look for additional variables with which to print within those locations. So printf can take one or more, and it is, with this, obviously being pushed onto the stack. So that's where it's it's being called. So if we take a look from here, I like to look at the calls myself. Say, ah, well, there's this call right after it gets printed. Let's see what that does. Go into that. We're going to take a look at the calls. And we are in a function, so we basically that go to two. We're going to say, OK, what are the calls here? Get environment. There's a printf. There's a printf. Sterling. There's another printf. Error. Input line too long. Let's see what the printfs are doing. Error. Premature EOF on standard in. Premature EOF on standard in. And some another call to a few more calls to other functions. So what this looks like. This looks like it is doing is some kind of input validation. In addition to maybe this is what our uh, what is testing out for the the answer to to number one. So let's take a look at the cross references for this function. So I put my cursor on the function name and hit X. And it's being called a whole bunch of places. A whole bunch of places. So what is the likelihood that this is checking for to see if you got the answer to phase one? Unlikely. Unlikely. What is the likelihood this is just doing some generic input validation? Likely. Does everybody see that? Because it's it, this is where a little bit of the art comes into it, or or the experience of if something is um, you know the the programming experience. If you want something that is going to be doing uh, input validation, you're going to have it called multiple times in your program. Wherever you're accepting input, there seems to be um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ones. We know there are six phases, and we saw something about a secret phase. So, hey, that would make a lot of sense. So, something you can do, cancel that. So, something that you can do is, huh, I think this is input validation. I think I'm going to, to name this function input validation uh, or, or input, you know, whatever. However, whatever makes sense to you. So put your cursor on that, press the N key, and you can rename it. I'm going to rename it input validator. Or, um, by default, Ida um, has has a 15 characters that it, it uses to store the names within its its database within the IDB. So it just says, "Oh, you're you're exceeding that. You want me to just." Extend that so that we store more. Yeah, sure. If I hadn't put the last two on there, probably wouldn't have asked. Okay, so we think this is input validator. Or so, how do we get back to where we were, where this is being called? Yep, to do escape. What's another way of doing it? We can take a look at the cross-references. 
go back that way. X. See where in, in main it was was most of these are in main. One of them is a different function. Um, yeah, but the easiest way is just that's good. Yeah, back to where it was being called. We take a look at the calls here. We see, and we take a look just a little farther. Yeah. Input validator, input validator, input validator, and it looks like it is where the phases are being called. So let's just assume that's the input validator. So what's next in our calls, or, or what's going on here? Well, let's see, EAX into bar 4, bar 4 into EAX, push EAX. And then this call to this function here. And Ida, being helpful that it is, says, oh, well, this that that's being pushed onto the stack immediately before the call, I think that's that's a car star. This isn't always right, but a lot of times it is. And it could just take this as an additional data point when you're doing your analysis, knowing that it's not perfect, but um, Ida, Ida can be pretty good about identifying, I think this is what this is. So let's dive into this function. Did I? Oh, thank you. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep, because I scrolled. So we have, why don't you just pull yourself up, input validator. There we go. Same thing. Except it's EDX, but it's just it's pushing it. We do this call, this function, and we see this this very short function that says, "Hey, public speaking is very easy." It's going to push that the opposite to that onto the stack. It's going to take arg0, which is the first argument to this function. It's going to push that onto the stack, and it's going to call this function. It's going to do some stuff. Test EAX. Test what's, what's EAX typically after a call? Return value from this function. Typically, not always. Um, and then you see this this call here. So let's jump into this function. Call, call. This is that bold line like mentioned means Ida identified there's it's looping here. So some more calls hmm. to the same function there. Hmm. But those are the only calls in this function. So wonder what's going on. Let's take a look at this function that gets called. And there are no calls here. Can anybody take a look at this and tell me what this function is doing? This sub 41700. This is the meat of it. Um, so, what's happening here? This is Sterling, um, which is weird because we saw Sterling in the imports and, and it identified a Sterling uh, library call, that uh, library function that was compiled in statically, um, but it didn't identify this. Ida isn't perfect. Keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to come across things that um, just 
uh, Ida doesn't identify as this is a function um, that it knows about. Um, when you analyze it, then you can rename it, and then anywhere else in that function that it gets called, and guess what? X, it gets called other locations. When you see that function, you go, oh, I know it's Sterlin because I named it you know, my Sterlin or something. Um, for those who don't see what's happening, it's taking this argument, this first, the, the argument that's coming in, which is the string. Um, and it's starting out, let's see, var 4, 0. Here's a, a common syntax for plus plus, where it moves the, the variable to a register, adds one, and then moves the register value back to the same variable. This is your plus plus. This is another plus plus. So you're doing two var 8 plus plus, var 4 plus plus. And here we're doing a comparison. This test, where we're grabbing byte pointer ECX, where ECX is var 8, we're grabbing a byte, moving it into EDX and testing EDX. And if that test was 0, as in the 0 flag was set, we're going to go over here. Basically, we're going to exit the function. This is finding the is the current character we're taking a look at if var 8 is our pointer to our input and var 8 gets incremented each time through this loop that means we're incrementing that pointer through the string until we find a null byte which is at the end of the string and then we're going to take what the value is in var 4 and move it into EAX before we, we, we return. And var 4 started out at 0 and was incremented each time through the loop. So see how it, it works its way through the string until it finds the null byte, incrementing this uh, a separate variable each time, and then just moves that into EAX before the return. So to make this useful, what you'll do is put your cursor on it, name, and we'll call it, since there already is a str len, I'm going to call mine string underscore len. And enter. Now it's named string underscore len. We can go back, escape, and see, ah, it's being called a couple times on R0, on R4. Um, by the way, notice that there are two arguments, R0 and R4. What, why did it name the, Ida name the second argument R4? It's one word faster. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's four bytes, the, um, each, of these is a uh, pointer, and so it's four bytes, and so R0 is at offset 0, R4 is at offset 4, even though it's the second argument. Just that can trip some people up, so just be aware. But it looks like we got two strings here. Bunch of other stuff going on. We got a loop over here. Anybody want to make a wild guess what this function is doing? Yeah, yeah. This is taking those two strings and it's doing a. You're, you see a little bit similar to the Sterling function where we see that plus plus syntax here twice, and then the jump back up. But then in here, what it's doing is it's grabbing uh, from your var 4 and from your var 8. Where are we? Yeah, var 4, which was r0, first argument, second argument, var 8. And it's actually 
comparing them. So this is going to be your string compare. String compare. Cursor, end key, code name, or rename. Type it in, and then enter. We're going to go back, escape. OK, so we see this string compare where it's getting arg0 and public speaking is easy. So anybody want to hazard a guess what the password is? Hmm. Password. It is password. No, wait, we tried that. Um, so if we go back to our command prompt and we run bomb again. And this time we say, what was it? Public speaking is very easy. Public speaking is very easy. Period. Period. Enter. And ah, phase one diffuse. How about the next one? So there we go. Found the password. Um, yeah. So there you go. Now you know how to do all the labs. Go ahead. No. Just kidding. Phase one diffused. Uh, any questions so far? Um, I'll go into how to make it so that you don't have to type um, each and every password each and every time momentarily. Um, but other than that question, uh, anybody have any questions so far on this? No. Anybody online have any questions? An emphatic no. All right. Okay. So what you can do, well, first of all, um, I will cancel out of that by doing a control C. And so 